Hey, we are back in the studio at Davis Media Access, and today my guest is Bob Fung, who is the developer of a local election website and blog called Civ Energy. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. You're here because you and I have something in common, and that's that we both care a great deal about local elections. Right. And so I carry out that work through Davis Media Access, and you carry it out through Civ Energy, which is a relatively recent um, addition right. to our election resources. So how'd you get started with this and why? Well, I, uh, I have done some reading after I retired uh, and I tried to analyze sort of what, what was happening in the world. And technology is really moving quickly yeah. uh, in the private sector. Um, and, uh, but it's not that, that well applied to uh, sort of public areas, mm -hmm. sort of say public decision making. So I thought that uh, I'd apply what I know to helping people make uh, better uh, voting decisions. Right. So. Now you and I first started talking about this some years ago and, and when the project started it actually had a different name. Right, it was voter prep. Voter prep. Right. And then um, I, I, it seemed like it kind of got back burnered for a little bit and now you're back and in a much more substantive way. Right, and the idea, uh, I am focused on local, uh, uh, on local coverage as you are right. uh, and um, I thought that if uh, the the website was just oriented at elections, that people wouldn't have any. They'd have to like find it when the elections came around. Right, only so once a year. Once, it, once, once every, every two years. Two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I thought I'd add some stuff to voter prep that uh, would try to hold people's interest through through the, through time. So what's your particular niche then? We have in, in Davis, for a small, relatively small city, we have a local newspaper, we have the community media center, we have a campus radio station, political blogs. Where do you fit in? Well, uh, we provide uh, on the web and on your phone and tablet um, uh, nonpartisan uh, views of the candidates. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there, there's the uh, voter pamphlet guide which is on paper and uh, which is fine but um, uh, the candidates can express their views their viewpoints on issues in video or mm -hmm. in text or both or in Spanish or wh whatever they like right. so and then uh, we we hope to reach uh, voters through you know through these uh, the modern channels right. of you know well, having them look at the phone. Let's take a look at the website sure. and we'll kind of, uh, uh, so here we are, civenergy.org. Right. And tell us what we're looking at here. I see. Um, this is the Davis City Council candidate uh, uh, page. Uh, there are nine candidates, so you see nine pictures right. of the candidates. Uh, and then uh, on the right column, you see events that are relevant to the election and uh, 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 if you scroll down, you'll see news news items that are related to the uh, the uh, okay. um, the event, and then in the middle, um, the, the the main part are uh, uh, we pose and um, uh, citizens pose uh, questions mm -hmm. to the candidates that they can answer that that that, that they can respond to. Right. Uh, so if uh, say we click on the first on the first issue, uh, which is just a basic introduction to the candidate, then you could see that three out of the nine candidates so far have uh, uh, written something uh, about who they are. And okay. we, on this page, you see a summary of what, what, what they wrote, but then if you click on uh, go to full viewpoint on one of those, uh, uh, you, you see uh, more, okay. more text. So it really is kind of rounding out the other suite of options I mentioned here in town. And let's talk about the city council race for a minute. Yeah, sure. We have uh, two seats open, uh, right. Rob Davis and Rochelle Swanson uh, uh, seats, and nine candidates. Last week it was ten, and we're down to <laughs> nine now. And, of course, the final filing date isn't for a few weeks yet. Right. And that's true of all races in, in the county. You you said that you're going to focus, Civ Energy is mostly going to focus on the Davis races and the, right. and the, the parcel tax issues, Nishi, right. and um, what Davis Media Access does is, is anything kind of in, within Yellow County, so from city up through congressional. Right. And I think you and I have already talked about, we'll make the Meet the Candidates videos we do available 
to you. Right. You can share them. Right. We'll share your contact. Right. And in fact, we're partnering on a forum. Right. Uh, so let's take a minute and talk about that. Yeah, the forum will be on uh, March 18th, uh, uh, Sunday, from 3 to about 5.30. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Ann Evans will be the uh, moderator. She's a former mayor of Davis and uh, co-founder of two Davis institutions, the Davis Co-op and the Davis Farmers Market. Yeah. Um, and so in sort of... Uh, it, uh, in, Anne would like to have some refreshments uh, after the formal period, so to you know because she's <laughs> also the author of the Davis Farmers Market. That, that's right, <laughs> that's right. So yeah. so and we might we we're trying to you know figure out if we can use some of her recipes and so on. So uh, we wanted to make it uh, uh, every, to, to make it a welcoming environment for the candidates uh, and for the people. And so after after the formal question and answer period. Um, the candidates will have tables uh, and, uh, and have their uh, 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 election materials right. available, and then they can uh, people can go up to them and talk to them and uh, and uh, uh, have a refreshment. Uh, so we try to make it uh, very low key and social. Right. Of course, the candidates um, end up doing a lot of forums. Right. And um, I, I saw recently that the, the League of Women Voters is, is trying to make a comeback here in right. Davis. It, That's right. It, it used to be very active. It used to be the League was a strong partner of ours. And they were known for the kind of forums where they would ask completely nonpartisan, you know, nonspecific issues. That's right. Some of these, the candidates sometimes end up doing 13, 14, 15 <laughs> That's right. forums in, That's a, right. in a season. Right. So we're getting out there early, relatively right. early. Yeah, so I, I attended the, that, uh, the last two meetings uh, for the, uh, of, this, uh, of the League of Women Voters. Right. Uh, so the, uh, the person who's uh, uh, ho uh, moderating the meetings says that it will take a year to form a new chapter that you need 18 people, mm -hmm. and so yeah, we we uh, she's been publishing the the uh, invitations to the meetings on Facebook. So right. if you're interested, you pe people should come out. Right. Yeah, it's it was very strange and kind of sad when the league closed up shop here in Davis, and I understood why a lot yeah. of its members had aged out and weren't really embracing social media. And right. It's kind of kind of time for a, a new breath of fresh air then. Well, in, in terms of Civ Energy, what kind of response are you getting from the candidates and from community members? Well, this year um, uh, I have, um, uh, I'm working with uh, Leslie Hunter, mm -hmm. who is uh, well known in the political community in Davis. And so she's been able to uh, y use her, um, her, the people that she knows to sort of get the word out. Right. And uh, in the in the conversation that we had with uh, yesterday at the League of Women Voters, uh, Jesse Salinas was there. Okay. Um, and um, in local politics, you know, like a website is it, it's uh, it's good, but a lot of a lot of local things happen by word of mouth yeah. and through relationships. Yes. And so uh, that's one sort of change in my approach uh, for Civ Energy. Um, that I've taken to try to get more involved in the community and get uh, things sort of uh, do partnerships like with you guys yeah. and so on uh, in, in order to get everything going. You're absolutely right. I had a volunteer comment to me last week that, wow, you're always in and out of the office. And I said, you know, if I'm in the office all the time, I'm not doing my job. Right. Because you're absolutely right. You have to go out there and connect with people and tell them, hey, I do this work and I'm really passionate about it. And right. here's where you can get more info. Are you interested? You yeah, know, right. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, so, so um, the enterprise has published uh, some, some uh, notices about the, uh, about the forum and... Right. Uh, We'll be tabling at farmers market, and you know we're trying to to uh, get to people uh, as many different ways as we can through Facebook and so on. Right. So what led you to do this? You mentioned you retired, and I have to admit I don't know from what uh, oh, okay. you retired. Yeah, I I uh, developed algorithms, decision making algorithms. Okay. So I studied uh, uh, decision making, how to help people make better decisions. Uh, it, in my graduate work, right. uh, and uh, that translated into developing algorithms that were done by by computers, and so uh, I uh, um, 
developed uh, algorithms that were mainly used uh, by financial institutions mm -hmm. to make decisions about their customers. So developing is it's your background. It's kind of in your blood. Yes, but that, that's, that's right. But I develop, uh, algorithms are, are one thing, and websites are, are another. <laughs> so I, I'm a, a complete novice at uh, website development, uh, and I have a, a team uh, that I use. I, don't, I, I do a little bit of programming, but I haven't done it for a while. So, so I, I depend on a, on a team to do that. Right. But I understand the, 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 the development process is the same. I mean, the same. Yeah. It has the same kinds yeah. of uh, pitfalls. And, uh, but you've been, in, you've been in the Davis area for a long time, right? You've That's raised, right. You raised your family here. I, I, and yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So I've lived here 30 years. All right. So and in, in that time, you, s you see a lot of local elections come and go. That's right. And yeah. kind of follow the trends. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I was involved in a, another project uh, uh, last year with the financial uh, finance and Budget Commission mm -hmm. to look at the city's uh, finances. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I, I find the sort of collective decision making, uh, the, the decision making that the city council does, this, the decision making that citizens uh, uh, do when they vote, I think it's fascinating to me. Yeah. Something that I hadn't looked at in my professional career, but right. I think it's really important to, to try to get it uh, to try to put some light on it and to help people do better. Yeah, again, kind of drawing back to where we started at the top of the interview, it's really about voter education. I think both right. what you're doing with Civ Energy and, and Davis Media Access election work is really about providing as much information as you possibly can. I like to say there's no excuse to be an uninformed voter when you've got all these resources right. around you. Right. Um, so how do you, in, in between election cycles, what kinds of content can we look forward to? Well, we, we, we thought that we would uh, provide discussions of, uh, of civic topics, which w were, not coming up, were not coming up for election, like Nishi had, uh, and the idea of, for example, innovation centers mm -hmm. has been on the, uh, on the city's uh, agenda for a number of years. Right, uh, although the current um, uh, bill or the current piece of measure does not include for the right, innovation Nishi center. Right, she doesn't include an yeah. innovation center, but things like that uh, uh, where, where if there's something sort of uh, uh, that the city government wants to do or, uh, you know, or, or maybe some private citizens want to do, then um, uh, we could highlight that for the citizens and have it discussed even though it's not an election. So, I mean, you know that, the, that uh, there's now a, a task force uh, for looking at the downtown for the core area. Yes, yeah, so, we had so, them in here a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so that would yeah. be one, that's not gonna come up for election. Right. Uh, but that's an important uh, topic for, for Davis. Uh, so maybe the condition of the roads, the, you know, how the parks are doing, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, so. remember your partnerships. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cool Davis is looking at, you know, the, the, the during the Davis Futures Forum, we've been recording right. those, and they're That's looking right. at a lot of those those kind of citywide issues. Right. So. Yeah. So the yeah. So there's other, the, the Davis Futures Forum. I think they do a great job yeah. of of highlighting various issues in town. Uh, so uh, we we uh, you know have we we talk with them regularly. Right. Well, thanks for coming in. We're almost at the end of our time. Okay. I told you it would go quickly. Yeah. Um, I just want to remind viewers that we, I, I'm sitting here with uh, Bob Fung, the developer and originator of CivEnergy.org. And uh, together with Civ Energy Davis Media Access, we'll be sponsoring a, uh, an election forum for city count, council candidates uh, March 18th, beginning at 3 p.m. at Davis Community Church. And former Davis Mayor Ann Evans will moderate. So it's been fun to talk to you about this this thing we do, this civic engagement around local issues. Very important. Thanks, Autumn. All right, thanks for coming in. And thanks for tuning in.